Hello and welcome to this next topic of the organic part of OCR A-level chemistry, topic 19, organic synthesis. Now the first part of the specification for this topic overlaps with the core practicals, specifically saying that you should be able to set up quick fit apparatus for reflux and distillation, and you should know how to prepare and purify organic liquids. So that's separating using a separating funnel, drying the liquid with an anhydrous salt like calcium chloride, and then redistillation of the product. But I'm not going to go through all that now, that fits much nicer into the core practicals and the unit one stuff about how to do organic reactions and other experimental chemistry. Now this topic really does combine a lot of the stuff from the previous topic. So all of the reactions we've seen so far with alcohols and alkenes and haloalkanes and alkanes, all of those reactions you need to be able to combine to make a two-step synthesis. What I mean is you need to be able to do one of those reactions followed by another one to get from your reactant to your product. Now that's more than twice as difficult because you need to be able to know all of the reactions that the reactant can do and all of the different ways of making the product of the second reaction so that you can then look to see where they overlap. And then once you know where they overlap, then you can make the intermediate product before you make the final product. So for instance, if you're going to go from an alkene to a ketone, need to know what reactions alkenes can do and the ways of making a ketone. Now that's quite an easy one because there's only one way you know at the minute of making a ketone and that's by oxidising a secondary alcohol. And so all you need to do is get from your alkene to the secondary alcohol and then alcohol to ketone. And so you really do need to know all of those different reactions that I've gone through so far. I'm going to go through a couple of examples but before I do that there's one part of the specification which says that you need to be able to look at basically unknown chemicals that contain more than one functional group and predict the reactions that they'll do. And very often they'll give you a crazy looking molecule you've never seen before. They're really intimidating because of the large structure, but everything that they do, you already know. There's a lot of functional groups here. There's a carboxylic acid, there's an alkene, uh, there's a primary alcohol and a secondary alcohol. But you know how all of those things react. You probably couldn't name this, but that doesn't matter. All you need to know is what primary alcohols do, and what secondary alcohols do, and what alkenes do, and what carboxylic acids do. The only thing we know that carboxylic acids do is react with bases, so they make carbonate spheres. Alkenes, we know we can add stuff to them, so we know we can make this into an alkane by adding hydrogen, or make it into a haloalkane by adding a hydrogen halide, or we can make it into a dihaloalkane by adding a halogen, or we could polymerize it. And we also know things that alcohols can do. So we can change these alcohols into halogens, for instance. If I add hydrochloric acid to this, then the chlorines will replace the OH groups. Nucleophilic substitution. We did that in a couple of videos ago. We can oxidize them. So I could change this alcohol into a carboxylic acid and this one into a ketone. What you need to be able to do is just ignore the rest of the structure and look at each individual functional group and decide what reactions it will do. So they might say that you take this molecule, they'll give it a name, caprastaprene, and to caprastaprene, they add acidified potassium dichromate and heat it at reflux. And they say, what are the product of that reaction? And a lot of people go, I've never even seen caprastaprene before. What is caprastaprene? How does it react? I've never been taught this but actually it just reacts the way that you've always known. The functional groups that are oxidised when you add acidified potassium dichromate is alcohols, and you know that. And so a secondary alcohol will change into a ketone, and a primary alcohol heated at reflux will change into a carboxylic acid. And that's all you do. You replace this OH with a ketone, you replace this with a carboxylic acid, and you're done. This will be the product of that reaction. So what I'm basically saying is don't be intimidated when they draw big molecules. You know what each functional group does, or you should know, and so you can work out the reactions that it's going to do. Just treat each functional group separately. So I'm just going to go through one organic synthetic route. The questions tend to start with a molecule and end with a molecule. And very often they might be molecules you've never seen before. But don't let that stop you. You need to get from this molecule to this molecule. And there's two steps. And the first one is making this unknown thing. And the second one is producing this product. So to answer this question, you need to have a good understanding of all of the reactions we've done so far. There's a lot of things that alkenes can do, a 
and so you need to know what they all are. And then there's some reactions which make alcohols, and you should know what they are. And the way you do it is by combining all of the knowledge you have about alkene reactions and all of the knowledge you have about making alcohols together, and then looking to see if there's any similarities between the reactions of alkenes and the reactions which would make a diol. And there is one. And what people often tend to do first is go, what reactions do I know of this? If I add water to an alkene, then I can make an alcohol. And that seems like a logical first step, because we need to add two alcohols, right? There's two alcohols on this side. I can add one alcohol, and then I can add another one. But the problem with that is, once you've added the first alcohol, you don't know how to change an alcohol into a diol. So what you need to be able to do is kind of work forwards and backwards at the same time to work out how you can make a diol with two alcohol groups on it. So, what ways do we know of making alcohols? You can add water to a double bond, but we've already said that if we add water to this double bond, then we're just going to get a single alcohol, not a double alcohol. So we can't do that. So the other way of making alcohols is by substituting a halogen group by adding OH minus nucleophilic substitution. We covered that in the haloalkanes lesson. So if I had a dihaloalkane, where both of these were bromines, for instance, instead of OHs, then when I add OH minus, each of the bromines would be replaced by an OH minus. So the question then becomes, how do I get from this to a dihaloalkane or a dibromoalkane? And we can do that because that's one of the reactions we know. Adding a halogen to a double bond will make a dihaloalkane. Now it doesn't really matter which halogen you add, because if you add it here, it's just going to be removed in the next step. So to answer this question, you need a lot of knowledge. And all of these questions were based around your knowledge of all those reactions we've done so far. I think there's 12. And the more familiar you are with those, the more easy you'll be able to access these kind of three mark questions. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to add bromine, and then I'm going to nucleophilic substitution it to make a diol. So the first step is just electrophilic addition of the bromine molecule to the alkene. It doesn't need any special conditions. As I said, this is the way of testing for an alkene. So just do it at room temperature and give it a shake. Then to get from dibromo to diol, you need to add OH minus ions in aqueous solution. So sodium hydroxide should do that. And this is just one example. You could do many different examples. You could go, as I said before, from alkene to alcohol to ketone. Or you could go from an haloalkane to an alcohol to an aldehyde. And we know all those different reactions. And so what you need to be able to do next is become so familiar with them that you can combine one with the next. And so the majority of this topic is actually remembering everything from previous topics and then applying it. So make sure, if you need to, you go back and watch those videos and become really familiar with the reactions alkenes, alkanes, alcohols, and haloalkanes. The next video is the last topic on organic and the last topic from the AS modules. Hope you can join me for that one.